Hello everybody, thank you for joining us for today's video. Um, today we wanted to talk a little bit about some therapy expectations and we're going to be talking about that for the next few videos I think. So um, today specifically we wanted to talk about what what would you expect to happen or what can you expect to happen if you've been lying to your therapist and then you tell them I've been lying to you about something. So I don't know, Like I feel like it might seem like a weird question but a lot of people do lie in therapy for one reason or another but what do people lie about? Why do they lie and what happens if they come clean? This is something we see a lot in therapy. Sometimes I think my clients know they're lying to me. Sometimes I don't think they know they're lying to me. They don't Some... even realize they're lying. Right, right. Because sure. sometimes you lie to yourself so much it's like you almost <clears throat> believe it, right? Yeah. Um, but it's something that we see a ton of in therapy, which I think, I don't know if that's surprising for people to hear or not, but because we don't work with court ordered people, right? Like they don't they, have to be here. They don't have to be here. Yeah. They're, they're here by choice because they want their lives to be better and they still come in and lie to us. Yeah. I, mean, I, I feel like, so I think the videos of us talking about boundaries has, have, have gone out. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen in the last couple of days, but, um, when I when I think about healthy boundaries, I actually think a healthy boundary is trying to figure out do I trust somebody enough to share certain parts of me? And I feel like that's a totally a appropriate and applicable situation for a therapist too. If I as a therapist have the expectation that you're going to come in here and you're going to open your entire heart to me in the first session, I'm probably the one that's off based, right? You got to learn to trust me which means I have to earn that trust. And so there's a part of me that's like, if you come in and you're lying, I kind of expect to not have the full truth, which is maybe different than lying. So maybe is the question like, first of all, I think that's normal. Secondly, so does the question then become what, how does a therapist respond if you tell us that you've been lying to us and it's been six months? Like, is that, is that what we're shooting for? Does that sound like a better question? Like, <laughs> probably. Because yeah. I feel like not knowing, like my expectation is I shouldn't know the full story quite yet. Sure. Right? Yeah. Right, right. Well, and I would say that maybe we're talking a little bit more about the times <clears throat> where our clients know they're lying to us, right? Because there are other times where clients leave things out, um, which again is understandable based on what our relationship is and kind of based on where they're at. But the times that people come in and just straight up lie, right? I've had people come in, people come in and just make up stories. I've had people that I've asked direct questions to, and then they give me a response and I can tell that it's not genuine. <laughs> right. So those, those kinds of lies. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, I think, I think most commonly it doesn't stem from like a, like a play, like a intentional place to like mislead you or be mean. I think a lot of times, hopefully people really like their therapists. And so then just like when you like someone in your life, like you want them to think good things about you. So they kind of like lie to paint a different picture than what they're experiencing, not recognizing that it's hindering their progress, but with the intent that like, well, if they knew the truth, they wouldn't like me anymore. Like the therapist wouldn't like me anymore, you know? Mm. Right. I'll bet that's pretty common. Yeah, I think so too. All right, so then let's let's get down to it. What would happen if somebody comes into your office and tells you, hey, look, I've been lying to you? I think my first response would be like, well, thanks for telling me. <laughs> <laughs> like, just that, I don't know. I Maybe this is just my approach, but I think it's uh, most helpful to, like I said, say thanks for, for being honest and then, like, validate, yeah, that's what's happened to I. It, Sometimes it's hard to tell the truth. Sometimes these things are hard to talk about. So I understand why you wouldn't want to talk about it. But like just really reassure them that I really am glad that they are found whatever it was in them to, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. How about you? What, what would you do? Somebody comes in, tells you they've been lying to you. I'm not as eloquent as Jaden is about it, but I would be like, okay, so what's next? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually find that on a personal note, like I don't, I don't feel frustrated by that. Yeah. I, I actually frame it in my mind as, okay, now we're starting to feel more comfortable to move into, you're starting to trust me and feel comfortable enough with me that we can move into some of the legitimate, like lower level stuff. Um, and then I do spend a fair amount of time reinforcing that behavior, right? Hey, 
I really appreciate the courage that it takes to come in here and admit something like that. Um, but yeah, for me, okay, not a big deal. Like I, I understand, makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably like, hopefully the universal, right? Is it's like not gonna hurt my feelings. Right. But as a therapist, does it ever hurt your feelings when somebody comes in and says they've been lying to you or misleading you for the last while? Because I do think some of that is a human response. Sure. Right? I'm, I'm sure there are some situations where I definitely have my feelings hurt. Yeah. It's funny because I find in a situation like that, I don't think my feelings get hurt in that situation, but I do question, could I have been more efficient? What could I have done to yeah. get us to this point sooner? Mm-hmm. Like you feeling know? bad for like, what did, did I not do something right that mm-hmm. made the, the client now feel like they couldn't be honest here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I go through that sure. personally. Yeah. I, I actually think that sometimes I do too. Um, when I've, I think of a couple of times when I've been lied to on a, a really big level, right? Like a misled for weeks and weeks purposely about something that maybe was uh, completely made up Important. or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and when that's happened, I don't know, I, I don't know that I've ever been like so upset with like the client. Instead, I sort of have this minute of like, well, dang it. Huh, I missed that. How, how did sure. I miss that? Right? Yeah. And, um, and, and it really has more than anything like caused me to be more introspective. Like what is it that maybe I could have done to help this person feel more comfortable sooner on, right? I mean, the thing is everybody lies, everybody, therapists, clients, everybody, everybody lies at times. And sometimes you've even been taught in your life that lying is a better way to go, right? It's sure. better to lie than to have to deal with maybe some of the consequences of telling the truth or maybe even as a kid it was easier to mislead your parents than it was to just come clean about things and so i think that most therapists are really understanding about lying the better thing is recognizing that as a client you coming clean about your lying is big progress for yourself and actually that makes you even look better than the lie you told in the first (laughs) place (laughs) absolutely yeah and you get to stop wasting your money on sessions talking about stuff that's not actually helping you move forward (laughs) sometimes i will tell clients in usually in the first session which we refer to as an assessment um, but sometimes in subsequent sessions um, i'm only as helpful as much as i know right if you come in and you lie i'm probably not gonna know i mean there are some things that are blatantly obvious that we can watch out for right um but I'm only as helpful as what I know. And also recognizing that it's uncomfortable to talk about some things. And so that process can take a little bit longer. Yeah, I think, so. and I think that's the root of it, right? Like the only person that is really being harmed by your lie in therapy is you as the client. Like that, it doesn't change the, the therapist is gonna approach the situation with all that they know, like you are saying. But if like you're only harming your own ability to heal and change. Yeah. So if somebody were listening to this and they were thinking, hey, I've been lying to my therapist and I probably need to come clean, what would you give them as far as advice? How, how could they go about that? What kind of wording could they use? What could they do to, to come to you and, and finally come clean about this? Because sometimes it's like, you know you're lying, but you're not sure how to come clean about it. It just feels too big. I think you're the eloquent one. That's what you, I knew you were going to say that, and I was like, well, you're the really straightforward one, so this is probably a better job for you. <laughs> Maybe you guys can both. We'll have an eloquent answer and a straightforward one. <laughs> and then the right one. Yeah, oh, the chair can give us the true answer. That, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, that's a hard one. I, I think that I would always encourage someone to, like, you don't need to explain yourself, um, but the I always compare it to, like, jumping off like a diving board, like cliff diving or something, right? Like you, you know, you're there to do it. And once you have that second of, okay, I can jump. You just got to jump and just, and just say it and just get it out there. And, um, yeah, not, not be eloquent about it, right? Just be really honest about it and say why, if you need to feel the need to say why you did it or feel like how it makes you feel the, I feel like crap, but for lying to you, but I have been like, great. Like whatever you need to help help it smoothly come out, but I think you just really got to take that jump. Like the second you feel the courage to do so, I like that. Yeah, I think that's really straightforward. Uh, recognize that you don't get to control your therapist's response. 
and all of us respond in a different way. Someone comes in and says, hey, I've been lying. I'm like, cool, what's next, right? Some therapists will take it personally and they may say something about that. But really that's part of the therapy is working through the tough conversations and the uncomfortable feelings rather than skirting around it. So wording, I say sit down and if you feel that bravery, like, okay, I'm gonna do this, just say, hey, can I just be really honest with you for a second? I've been lying over the last couple of weeks and I feel bad about it, but I actually do need your help. Can we talk through this? It's way better than my answer. Well, I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> it's but... funny you guys just switched roles because you did the really direct, like, <laughs> you did the eloquent thing. <laughs> I just, I, I think that is the therapeutic process, is having some of those tough conversations. Yeah. Okay, what's the right answer? Uh, I, I think those were both the right <laughs> answer. <laughs> but I would also say uh, I had a mentor once in my life who um, really encouraged me to come up with how how I would ever talk about these really hard things with people in my life. And one of the things that he said that I should say, or maybe like kind of the template that he gave me is, this is really hard and I don't want to talk about it, but, and then just lay it out there, right? And that's And so I've used that, this is really hard and I don't want to talk about it, but, and then just say whatever it is. I've used that template for a bunch of things in my life and it's actually been a pretty good one because it kind of just, like you feel that moment of like you're gonna jump, and yeah. then it's like okay. Also, rich ripping the bandaid off. Right. Yeah. Here's my words. Okay, go. Yeah. Right. Um, and can I, I ask a question on that? Yeah. When you have done that direct of an approach, has the response that you've gotten from the person been better or worse than what you had anticipated? It well, I'm a little bit anxious, and so I always anticipate that it's going to be worse. And I think that when I've gone with that approach, people usually respond better than, than, what, you anticipated. than what I anticipated. Um, but having a little bit of a lead in or having some wording for me at least has helped, right? Mm -hmm. You guys, I always think lying is one of the weirdest things to treat as a therapist because before somebody can treat your lying, you have to be honest about your lying. I know. Right? And so it is a weird thing to treat, um, but really we can't help you through it unless you're honest about your lying. That is a bit of a conundrum. <laughs> yeah. Which I think just goes to show the importance that the, the role of the therapist is in creating a space where you can be honest. So that's why I say, like, I don't usually take offense to that because at some point it's my job to create this environment. And sometimes I do better and sometimes I do worse. And at that's some fine. point it's the client's job to, to make the take jump. the leap and actually say the things that needs to be said in that yeah. space. Yep. Perfect. Well, thanks everybody for joining us for today's episode. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and leave a comment and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Thank you.